here we have a Vietnam all the way to Iraq vet, Mr. John Puzo. Maybe you're prepared for a longer speech than I'm, a taller speech on, than I'm prepared to give here today, I don't know. Um, etched up here in stone is Israel Putnam. His plow is there. Israel Putnam was called out of his field as he was plowing his field to answer the, <clears throat> answer the nation's call during uh, the American Revolution. General Israel Putnam was a member of Rogers, the original member of Rogers Rangers. And I think that what he did stands as a testimony, which may be why it's etched in stone there the way that it is. But I'm really glad to see so many of you all here. And this is the character of the American people, unlike any other people in the face of the earth. During the American Revolution, a very well-dressed European officer approached an American Continental Army rifleman who was sitting at the base of a tree chewing tobacco. And this very well-dressed European officer said, pardon me, but can you tell me where your master is? Obviously he was looking for the man's commander. Well, the American got up, spat out some brown tobacco juice, and said, the son of a bitch ain't been born yet. <laughs> We're all familiar with these red herring arguments. An assault rifle is not an assault rifle. We all know that. It's not about high capacity magazines. It's not even about gun control, because gun control is a misnomer. You need to stop using those words yourself and correct everybody else who uses it in your presence. It's not gun control. It's civilian disarmament. Now, you know, we're familiar with the Second Amendment and its reason for being. It is to, pre to prevent <coughs> tyranny. <sighs> Just give me a second. But I want to uh, mention some other things that we may not be so sure about, but it's also important for us to know. Perhaps that... Uh, <coughs> No, I'm getting back spasms. Jumping out of too many airplanes and helicopters. <laughs> Thank you, that made me feel better. All right, so we know that there's a tyrannical government about prowling about for our guns. Thank you very much. Our guns, your guns, everybody's guns. They don't want them around. Um, that's true. Enemies foreign and domestic. But there's something else that we need to be that we need to be concerned with. That, ja that Japanese officer who said, we probably shouldn't invade America because there would be an American behind every blade of grass with a rifle and he knows how to use it, is the rest of the quote. But today there, there are probably not so many wise foreign governments or people who uh, feel that way. They do feel we're vulnerable. I'm going to give you a few things now to think about. Russian submarines and aircraft carriers use Venezuela and Cuba as ports of call. Their submarines also patrol off our coasts and in the Gulf. No one seems to care or to talk about the nuclear-tipped cruise missiles with a 3,000-mile range that Russia possesses and can drop off in these ports of call without notice. China has already been caught red-handed under the Clinton administration dealing fully automatic AK-47s to the LA gangs from their Costco ship, the Empress of the Sea, off the coast of LA, destined for the Long Beach, California Harbor. Operatives from China, Russia, Cuba, Vietnam, North Korea, Mexico, and the jihadists from everywhere are already here. Make no mistake about it. Two million gang members trained in the use of weapons, fully armed, and highly disciplined. Uh, that's 50,000 per state. Russia still has thousands of nuclear ICBM warheads pointed directly at us. 
China is the only country in the world that still war games against the United States. Tried, China tried to shoot down one of our satellites in 2007, unsuccessfully, but succeeded in shooting down one of their own. Good shot. Espionage continues at a furious pace from the usual suspects everywhere, including, strangely enough, the Israelis. Our own domestic terrorists, seated by former KGB and spawned, who spawned the SDS and the Weather Underground during the Vietnam War, have not evaporated into thin air. That's right. And they have given spawn to uh, the current character sitting in the White House who brought the plague with him. Yay. It was Bush's fault. <laughs> yeah, so it wasn't the uh, earthquake at Haiti, it was over Bush's fault, that's right. So their own spawn sits now in the White House and he brought the plague with him. These domestic terrorists, and that's what they are, in addition to operating as a fifth column of the North Vietnamese Army, also served as a cadre for the street shock troops of the 1960s and 70s, like the Black Panther Party, the Symbionese Liberation Army, and other individuals in this country who assassinated police officers, firemen, veterans, bank officials, armored car drivers, college students, and who committed arson, riot, and mayhem, and blew up people, places, and things across America. These people haven't gone away. They're sitting in the highest office of the land right now. They also participated in the brutal interrogation of American prisoners of war, including one, Green Beret Nick Burrow, uh, Nick Rowe, who managed to conceal his true identity from the North Vietnamese while a captive until an American by the name of Cora Weiss of the Committee of Liaison informed on him to the NVA, where he was starved and tortured for years after that. Traitor! Now, I haven't mentioned how these same people and their revolutionaries are gnawing away at the fabric of this nation in every corner, but everywhere you see, in every walk of life, and everywhere, I don't care whether it's the schools, the legislatures, the courts, it doesn't matter. Things are out of control, it's broken, and this is not by accident. So now what I will leave you with is this patriot's oath. And I have volunteered for this country to defend the rights that they now want to take away from me in 1968. God bless you. And I served up on and off. Don't thank me. I got a play, I got a stake in this too, just like you. But I served, I tried to, I served the best I could. And uh, when they asked me in 2004, would I go back? And I did three tours in Iraq. Things changed a little bit. I saw the faces of so many young women currently serving, uh, uh, you know, all gunned up and under armor. And it was something that I wasn't quite prepared for, but there's a lot of them and they deserve our respect. Yeah. Yeah. During the Vietnam War, one American woman was killed in action one out of 58,000 killed in action on those black walls down there in Washington, D.C. Her name was Sharon Ann Lane, and she was a first lieutenant, and she was in the flower of her life when the North Vietnamese Army attacked her hospital and killed her. So far, well, the last time I checked, which was a while back, there have been about 75 American women killed in action in the current wars in the Middle East. I don't see it coming to an end until some things change around here. And it really begins with your tax dollars, believe it or not, more than anything else. So hear this Patriot's Oath. Today the vengeance of hell boils in my heart. I despair the demise of this republic as it appears in flames about me. If through you, the people behind me in this office, this republic feels the pain of death, then you will be remembered in infamy evermore. I disown you forever. Abandoned may you be forever destroyed in the history of this state as good faith representatives of the people. Unfaithful to your sworn oath to protect and defend the Constitution of this state and of the Constitution for the United States, which you would rend asunder with the lien of change, chains and encumbrance. You are not worthy of your post. May you be released from every bond of nature that ties you living to this planet. May your souls rot with the damned for eternity for your effort of this disarmament of the people. Yeah. Yeah.